Hello and welcome to Salter Spade Science. My name is Richie Grayright, and uh, today I'm going to be teaching you about Lagrangians. But first, let's start with a little notation. Uh, some of you may already know this. When I say x, we're talking about the position of something, okay? And then if we were to take the time derivative, the time derivative of x, then that gives us x dot, which some of you may know that as velocity. And if we're to take the time derivative of x dot, if we're to take the time derivative of x dot, that gives us x dot dot, which is acceleration. Okay, so so we have position, velocity, and then acceleration. Okay, so this is a little notation. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is it's natural for things to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. Okay, so and typically if so that and that's how gradients work if we have gradient of some function it goes from high to low okay but if we have a but it's opposite okay <sighs> how am I supposed to describe this okay so we're gonna have V of X with some of you may know that as the potential energy if we have a higher potential energy here then the gradient or the force is going to be pointing toward the higher concentration of the potential energy. So that gives it a negative gradient, so which means that force is equal to negative gradient V with respect, or actually we don't have any respect because I was thinking of writing the um, I was thinking about writing the gradient in its full derivative, partial derivative form, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to write it as that, okay? And we also know that F is equal to mass times acceleration, or as we just learned, notation and stuff, F equals mx. So this is all the prior note. Um, this is all the prior information you need. Before now, let's get into Lagrangians. Okay, so we're gonna keep this up here. So I'm just gonna throw an equation at you. L is equal to t minus v. Well, we already know what v is. V is the potential energy, and t is the kinetic energy. So a Lagrangian is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. Okay, and us who have studied, those of you who have studied um, kinetic energy know that it is equal to one half m v m v, where it's just velocity, which is x dot. We have to use this proper notation, and you'll see why. And then we, and we're just going to keep, because the potential energy depends on what force is be, is acting upon um, whatever we're talking about. So we're just going to keep v as v, except we're going to do a v as a function of x. Okay? So if we were to write the, the Lagrangian in its full form, we would get L equals one half m x dot minus v of x. Okay, so I just want to show you something. This is this is interesting. This is called the Euler-Lagrange equation, and you'll see why this is significant in a second. Let me just throw this at you. So the time derivative. So we're gonna have the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity, and all of that is going to be equal to the the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x. Okay? 
No, 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 crap. Uh, where's the eraser? I have no idea how to use this. Soft eraser. This isn't supposed to be X dot dot, or it's, it's just supposed to be an X, okay? So, now that we have that, let's, and we know that this is the Lagrangian, let's solve this Euler Lagrange equation. Let me just write that out. Euler Lagrange equation. Okay, that's what this is right here. So let's solve this, okay? So we're gonna start with the we're gonna start with the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity. Well the only part of the of the Lagrangian that is a function oh yeah this is squared by the way. I forgot to put the squared there. Um, the so the Lagrangian so the only part of the Lagrangian that's a function of velocity is is the the kinetic energy here. So we are going to take the derivative of this, which we know from the power rule, we just multiply the we multiply the exponent by the coefficient and then subtract one, which two times one half is one, and then mx and then we have the two minus one is just one. So it's just mv what's it? why is this being slow? Um Hold on a sec, let me just do this. Okay, uh, for some reason this was being slow, and it still is being slow. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's okay. So we're gonna keep that mv dot, okay? So you can, you can see why I got that, I explained that. And we're gonna take the derivative of that with respect to t. And if you remember, the time derivative of this of x dot is x dot dot, which is acceleration, is equal to m x dot dot, or m a, which, if you remember, force is equal to m a. See? And m, so, so we're going to get the force on this side. This is going to be the force right here. Okay? So now we're going to do so now we're going to do the other side of this equation with okay so the only part that's a function of x over here is the potential energy which is because it's minus v of x we're going to take minus v of x with respect to x okay I wrote that way out there. I'm not entirely sure why. But, you know, since x is the only component here, this, this can be equal to the negative gradient of v of x, which is also equal to f. So if, so we can, so if you see here, we can, if you solve both sides of the Euler-Lagrange equation, you should get some expression of the force. Okay, and that's all I really wanted to show in this video. I just wanted to show that how you can derive the original f equals m a, you know, f equals negative gradient v of x. You know, how you can get these things from the Lagrangian and using the Euler-Lagrange equation. And in the next video, I'll be sharing with you how to find the action of a particle by using the Lagrangian. So let's do that next time. My name is Yuichi Greerite, and I am signing.